It's the ACC on ESPN, the 162nd meeting all time between Wake Forest and Clemson, and the only regular season meeting between these two teams this season. We welcome you to Clemson on this Super Bowl Sunday. Pretty good life if you're a Patriots fan and a Clemson football fan these days. That's a lot of winning over the last few years. A lot of winning over the last decade as well. And he's drop alongside Corey Alexander. Got a couple of teams here that are trying to right the ship. What they have is two of the best guards in the conference. Both, though, have had to shoulder larger loads because they haven't had much help. Well, they really are. And Brandon Childress for Wake Forest, of course, leads them in scoring and assists and is second in the ACC in minutes played per game. Shoulders a huge load. Hasn't sh shot the ball very well this last two, trying to get back on track. And Marquise Reed, of course, everything that he's done for Clemson. And have to remember, he averages 21.3 points per game in his career versus Wake Forest. So I know he's looking to have a huge afternoon here today. Reed, the fourth leading scorer in the ACC. Clemson, two and four five in conference but they had a big win Tuesday against Pittsburgh which was important because that was coming off a heartbreaking loss last weekend to NC State and it was Marquise Reed missing four free throws at the end of that game versus NC State giving them the opportunity to win it but Reed bounced back versus Pittsburgh and and again he's one of the better players in the ACC fourth in the ACC in scoring and I know he does not want his senior year to end up the way that it started and he and Shelton Mitchell both will be trying to make sure that changes for the Tigers. Clemson, a sweet 16 team a season ago. Elijah Thomas knocks down the long two. And Clemson on the board first. Starting lineups for Wake Forest. Brandon Childress leads the team in scoring. Sharon Wright Jr., the son of the former Clemson legend. Sharon Wright was an All-American with the Tigers and the number six pick in the 1994 draft. Here is Wright, two in black. Now Jalen Horde, the five-star freshman. Five to shoot. Wright launches. And an air ball. That's been a problem with Wake this season. Too many times late in the shot clock. Everyone's standing around waiting for somebody to make a play. More often than not, it's been Brandon Childress. Well, oftentimes that's lack of experience with this group. You think about you have two freshmen in the backcourt starting. I'm sorry, two freshmen starting in the starting lineup with Horde and, and Sharon Wright Jr. But then you've got Olivier Saar and Shondi Brown, two sophomores who didn't play huge minutes last year. So now you've got a little bit of inexperience, and that's really been the biggest issue for Wake Forest all season long. Shelton Mitchell hit four threes against Pitt last time out to snap out of a shooting slump. Thomas in a low post. Thought he might have shuffled his feet. Well, that was great defense by Saar, recognizing that Thomas wanted to go over that right shoulder and get to that left hand. Saar does a great job staying on that shoulder, but Thomas, as you mentioned, shuffling the feet maybe a little bit to find the opening. If James Harden can do it. Why can't the big guy? Childress. Wake has really struggled this year from the outside. Saar, it comes back to Horde. He'll launch. That's a three. And the rebound to Elijah Thomas. And for two straight possessions, it has been bad possessions for Wake Forest on the offensive end of the floor. But and Elijah Thomas picking up that foul is kind of what Brad Brownell always wants to stay away from. And again, when you got a big man getting the rebound and bringing the ball 94 feet is normally the recipe for disaster. That's when your guards are going over and screaming at the big to give up the basketball. And if I'm Shelton Mitchell right now, I'm telling Elijah Thomas, this is what happens when you go against what I'm asking you to do. You've been in that movie before, right? I have been in that movie before, and I have to say that many of the conversations I've had with bigger guys have come because of that in itself. And it, it drives you nuts as a guard because, again, it's not like you're trying to go do their job, and now they're trying to do your job. Shelton Mitchell began his career at Vanderbilt. He has... Uh, battled knee injuries throughout his career. Now David Scara. Four of the five starters for Clemson began their careers elsewhere. And a change from Wake Forest to the zone. Thrown Clemson's offense off quite a bit. Now recognizing under five on the shot clock. Mitchell's three not there. Saar the rebound. Here's Childress almost 16 points per game. But he has struggled with his shot of late. 
Over David Scara, Clemson's best defender, and Amir Sims there to clean. And Wake 0 for 4 from the field right now, and they've had all tough shots thus far. So give Clemson's defense a lot of credit. Whether it's been late in the shot clock or early, they struggled on offensive end. Shondi Brown coming over to help gets the block on Thomas, and early on, Clemson feeding the inside with Elijah Thomas, but Thomas gets a breather, and Javen White, the grad transfer from Oral Roberts, checks in. He's coming off his best game as a Tiger. And I love the fact that Elijah Thomas goes over to Brad Brownell and tells him, my fault, because he knows that foul that he has is on him for taking the basketball 94 feet. The lob to Soar, who can't finish. And Wake now 0 for 5. That was their best look. It definitely was their best look, and a nice pass by Wright to be able to get Saar underneath. It's just... That's really been a microcosm of how the year has gone for Wake Forest. You've got young players who are capable of making plays, but when they get their opportunities, just unable to finish them. There is Danny Manning now in his fifth season as Wake Forest's head coach. Took the Demon Deacons to the NCAA tournament a couple of years ago. Then last year they stumbled to a 4-14 four and 14 league record and... A mass exodus in the offseason. Bryant Crawford and Doral Moore entering the draft as underclassmen. Surprising move. Neither were drafted. Keyshawn Woods, Donovan Mitchell, Rich Washington among the transfers. And all of a sudden, Danny Manning has a team with seven new scholarship players. And I honestly believe if you have Bryant Crawford and Doral Moore, you've got a team that's competing to get into the NCAA tournament. In comparison to one of the youngest teams in America, which Danny Manning is putting on the floor each and every night, learning on the fly. Here comes Wright. Wake still looking for its first field goal, first points. And there it is. Shondi Brown from the outside, the sophomore from Orlando. And Shondi Brown has five 20-point games in his Wake Forest career. Four of those 20-point games have been in ACC road contests, so a good sign for Shondi Brown getting started in this one. Reed over Childress. And Brown for the rebound. Brown pushing for Wake, ran into Scara, and comes to Clemson. Amir Sims from the corner, that's a three. And that's a great sign for Clemson on the other side. Amir Sims, Brad Brownell telling us about they need for Amir Sims or Scar. One of the two has to play well every night. It doesn't have to be both of them, but he has to get contributions from one of those two guys on the offensive end of the floor. Here comes Jalen Horde. Has it taken away by Reed. Reed crosses over right and lays it in. Second foul on Sharon Wright Jr. Clemson. Using defense and turning it into offense. And a great play by Marquise Reed. Not only coming up with the steal, but having the patience to recognize he had time to make a nice move in transition. Of course, finishes with the flex. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by State Farm. Talk to an agent today at 800-STATE-FARM. And game. Seriously good scent. And he's Shroff, Corey Alexander with you. Clemson's 2-5 and five in league play, but if you're buying stock, this might be one to buy now. Look at who they've played already. Their losses have come to Duke on the road at Syracuse against Virginia. The Florida State game, they had a nine-point lead in the first half. NC State was the game they should have won. Marquise Reed, who's at the line now, the best free throw shooter in program history, missing four free throws down the stretch, opening the door for that Braxton Beverly three at the buzzer. Clemson is only a few plays away from maybe being on a four-game win streak coming into this game. And that's why there's a positive attitude from Brad Brownell and the leadership on this team. You're talking about a very experienced team. You've got four fifth-year seniors when you look at Scara, Thomas, and Reed and Mitchell in the background. And then you've got Javin White, of course, who another guy, grad transfer. So there's a tremendous amount of experience on this team. And they know that they can get this season turned around. Brown followed his shot, but Wake now has more turnovers than points. Brad Brownell in his eighth season 
he's got a chance early next year to become the winningest head basketball coach on the men's side in the history of Clemson. And Wake Forest now going back to the zone. They've been back and forth between man and zone. And it's really been a struggle for Wake defensively. We talked about their shooting woes, but their biggest issues have come on the defensive end of the floor, having coming up with big stops when they need them. Scara from the corner. It's a 9-0 run for Clemson. And the Tigers are going to have to hit outside shots. Teams have tried to zone them quite a bit this season as we get a reach-in foul on Clyde, to trap. Last year, they had Gabe DeVoe, that second shooter. They've been looking for someone to do this consistently all season. And they have to do it by committee. Scar knocking down a three in the corner, the same spot where Amir Sims was able to get knocked down a three earlier. They're not going to be able to replace the, the production of, you know, Gabe DeVoe with one guy. But with Clyde Trapp and his ability to shoot the basketball, had made four threes in their last game versus Pittsburgh. He's improved. And then Scar and Sims, they have a number of guys that can make shots for them. They just have to get it done more consistently. Jalen Horde quiet early. He's their second leading scorer. Now Childress, contested shot. It falls short. And for Wake, this has been an issue of late. They've been getting into early holes and unable to climb out. Reed through the contact, no foul. And Marquise Reed has five. But that's the area, Anish, right there. There's no reason that in this game, Marquise Reed should be able to bring the basketball down the floor. And Smart is the one picking him up. Because that's easy pickings for Marquise Reed. He's going to get whatever he wants with Smart having to guard him on the perimeter. He kind of smart the Buffalo transfer, backing down White. Musius, the freshman. And the putback by Jalen Horde. A top 25 recruit, the biggest recruit that Wake Forest reeled in since bringing in Al Farouk Aminu a decade ago. And Jalen Horde is the main part of the reason there are a number of NBA scouts here. And Horde will be one of those guys that has to make a decision when this season's over. Not sure if it's the right move for him to head out, but of course he and his family have to make that decision. But it would be tough for Danny Manning to replace that production next year. Shot clock at two. Sims has to put it up. Hits the rim. So Bryant Crawford and Doral Moore made those decisions last year. Both did not get drafted. After entering the NBA draft, if you're Jalen Horde, if you could give him advice, what would it be? Stay in school. <laughs> it's that simple. If you don't know that you are a guaranteed lock in the lottery, or at least a guaranteed first-round pick, you come back to school and help your team win, and then you have an opportunity to increase your draft stock. But again, if that's not there for you, stay in college. Again, they, in my opinion, that young men don't value this opportunity that they have. It's probably the best four years of my life to be able to play college basketball because once you leave it, it's no getting that back. Five turnovers now for Wake. Reed. It's become almost a stigma now. Oh, you stayed in school three years. Yeah, you stayed it, in school four years. It's a bad thing if you're from an NBA standpoint, according to many people from the outside watching, but the reality is, Anish, not all these guys are going to the NBA. That's just the way it works nowadays. Clemson with an 11-point lead. Manning successfully crossed over from college to the NBA and back to college. Former number one overall pick after leading Kansas to a national championship. Made the all-star team sixth man of the year in the NBA. And then when he had the coaching job at Tulsa, was the coach of the year in Conference USA. I'm Bill Self's staff for that 2008 team. You know where I'm going. Where are Danny you going? Manning was a two-time All-Star. Nice. Was he any good? Could he play? Danny Manning could play. Okay, so I just gave you earlier today <laughs> a great defensive stance by Clemson. Elijah Thomas stepping out. Danny Manning is a two-time NBA All-Star. I just gave you two players earlier today in our previous argument that were multiple-time All-Stars that you said could not play. You said they weren't good players. Well, we were talking. All right, for, <laughs> hang on a second. The context here. I'm just here, telling you what you said. The context here. We were talking about the worst NBA Finals teams of all time. And Zadrunas so Ilgalsis and Larry Hughes, both All-Stars on listen, that team. They were solid players, oh. but that 07 Cavs team. 
we'll get an NBA argument. It was one of the worst teams to reach an NBA Finals. Donnie Newman knocking down the three. Clemson shooting the basketball extremely well in their home floor right now, which has to be an encouraging sign for Brad Brownell. And this is what we saw in the first half against Pittsburgh on Tuesday. Clemson dropped 51 against Pitt. Here comes Horde. And Jalen Horde shows you why he was so sought after. From Carnon, France, little beach city in the south. And Thomas taking a hit from Horde on that drive. A nice move by Jalen Horde getting to the left hand and driving past Amir Sims and then the ability to finish over both bigs. And Jalen Horde, not just a back-to-the-basket player, he has tremendous ability on the perimeter as well, which is why he shows so much promise. But at the end of the day, I think a little more maturity in his game would help him moving forward. Basket plus one for Elijah Thomas. Speaking of maturity, we talked about the fifth-year seniors and grads, graduate seniors for Clemson, and here's one of them, Elijah Thomas. One of the reasons why there was so much optimism in this program because you have all of this experience returning to your team, and Thomas just flexing again, showing off how strong he is inside, and Clemson has been strong on the offensive end of the floor tonight. Seven for Thomas. Olivier Saar back in for Wake. 22 to 7 Clemson on top one thing the Tigers have done so far they've kept Wake off the free throw line no free throw attempts for the Demon Deacons they get a quarter of their points at the line the second highest rate in all of Division 1 and right now Wake with only three field goals Jalen Horde is two for three from the field for four points Shondi Brown knocking down the three but that's the only two Demon Deacons that have scored and you see now another Great defensive stand, having Wake Forest shoot up against the end of the shot clock. And Wake went out of bounds. And we've seen that a few times already. Wake having to work deep into the shot clock. Well, and, and the calling car for Brad Brownell is he's a defensive coach. And this Clemson team has had times where they've struggled defensively. You know, but this is what they do. This is what his program has been about. And once he got better offensive talent, I think they got away from that a little bit. Not Coach Brownell, but his players did. But when they have that mentality of they're going to be a very good defensive team, that's part of what have made them be successful and allowed them that Sweet 16 run a year ago. Childress fouled by Scora. And Scora does a good job of making the play on the basketball so that will not be a flagrant foul, just a common foul. But does a good job of stopping the break. Even though it looked like a bad result, great play by Brandon Childress coming up with the steal. And you see Scar going for the basketball and stopping the fast break. Now in the NBA, that would actually be a clear path foul. So you would be getting free throws, but won't be the case here. And it really stopped Brandon Childress from getting two points. So a smart play on Scar's part. Childress 0 for 4 in the early going, and he is now 6 for his last 30, 1 for his last 15 from 3. Of course, he is the son of Randolph Childress, Wake Forest's all-time leading scorer and current assistant coach, and your old high school teammate. That's my guy right there. Of course, Brandon much cooler than Randolph, but, you know, Randolph doesn't like to hear about that right now. But, you know, again, in... in Watching these two and Randolph having to coach Brandon, it's an interesting dynamic because, of course, you know, as father, he wants to make sure he's supportive, but he's toughest probably on Brandon. You often see in the very short amount of time that Brandon does get breaks in the game, you'll see those two every now and then having a heated discussion about something that happened on the floor. But, of course, Brandon, great respect for his father as a man, but also as a player as to what he's been able to do in the Wake Forest uniform. Thomas has been aggressive on the offensive end early. That's his first miss. Here comes Horde. Horde from the outside, short. Shelton Mitchell with a pretty move and denied at the rim by Jalen Horde. And the ball actually hits Shelton Mitchell out of bounds. So it goes back to Wake Forest. And Mitchell with the nice move to get to the rim, but Horde coming up with the big block. 
And you see the ball ricochets off of Saar and hits Mitchell out of bounds, rewarding the basketball. Back to the Deacons. Deeks just 3 of 15 from the field. And that is their seventh turnover. With less than eight minutes to go, Wake as many points as turnovers. Clemson has had a great history of big man Horace Grant, Eldon Campbell, Larry Nance, Dale Davis, and Sharon Wright. Played here in the early 90s. Three seasons at Clemson, almost averaged a double-double, and was the sixth overall pick in what was a pretty good 1994 NBA draft. And he played against Randolph Childress, who had four years at Wake and an epic ACC tournament in 1995. Randolph was a first-round pick as well, and now their sons playing together for Danny Manning. Absolutely, and both these guys, of course, playing for playing in the league that their fathers were legends in, and Sharon Wright actually three years at Clemson, and Randolph was five years at Wake Forest after tearing his ACL during his sophomore year. And, and you played against strong. both. I, I played against both of them, actually, and in, in, believe it or not, Sharon Wright won the McDonald's All-American three-point contest when we were in it. Wow. Yeah, and, and I remember somebody asked me if I let him win. Of course not, but <laughs> he actually got out there and knocked down more threes than a number of very good shooters, and he, he held that against us, too. Now Elijah Thomas holding everything against Wake. He's got nine. He's outscored the Deeks by himself. And he got off to a great start, knocking down the jumper, and then has done his damage around the rim. But give Thomas a lot of credit for the way that he's approached this game outside of the 94-foot take. And now as he gets a rebound and looks for a guard, <laughs> now he's playing the way Brad Brownell wants him to play, and more importantly, staying on the court here in the first half. Back to Thomas. And Mitchell traveled. And instead of bringing the ball full court, this is what Brad Brunell wants to see from Elijah Thomas, catching the ball off of team, the teammates' dribble penetration and then able to finish through contact above the rim. Wake Forest fortunate not to get a foul call in that play. There was a lot of contact from Wynn on the inside. Wake just 3 of 16 from the field. Shondi Brown knocks it down. Wake this season, the struggles on defense have been evident. They're giving up 78 points per game in conference. How much of that, Corey, has to do with bad shot selection on the offensive end? Well, that is a, a large contributor to it because it, oftentimes when you take those bad shots, the rest of your team isn't prepared to get back on defense because they're not expecting those shots to go up. And Clemson turns it over for the fourth time. Oh. The Clemson crowd, even though they've been very good thus far, they've been kind of subdued, but that call right there... Kind of got everyone on edge a bit as John Newman attacks the rim. The basketball goes out of bounds and hard to see, but it looks like that could have gone off Shawnee Brown's feet. Hoard against Newman. He's been a pretty good defender off the bench for Clemson. Well, those two guys are actually teammates for Team CP3 AAU. And another shot by Wake with the clock running down. It belongs to Clemson. A big Monday doubleheader. First at 7 Eastern. Number 15 Louisville travels to Blacksburg to take on number 12 Virginia Tech. If you watched the Virginia Tech NC State game yesterday, sorry. <laughs> I mean, Dr. James Naismith is somewhere throwing up in his mouth. 47 to 24 was the final score. And then at 9, West Virginia visiting Texas Tech. Red Raiders had that great non-conference. They've lost 4 of 6 in league play. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that Virginia Tech will not hold Louisville to 24 points. That should be a much higher okay. scoring okay. game. I went way out on that one. Although right now, what we've seen from Wake Forest in the first half, it's not that far removed from NC State yesterday. Get well soon to my guy Justin Robinson. Hopefully he's back on the court soon for the Hokies. 
That's a, a tough loss right now for Buzz Williams and his group. Not considering the fact that, of course, they still came up with a huge win yesterday. But moving forward, Robinson is a major piece not to be in that lineup. He kind of smart, by the way, picked up the last foul for Wake. Thomas sets the high screen. Reed in and out. A rebound batted to Childress. Sharon Wright Jr. back in there for Wake. He's got the two fouls, two in black. Now Horde off balance. It's been hard to get a good shot if you're Wake today. Well, Elijah Thomas has done a great job protecting the rim and more importantly running the floor, sealing. Thomas tried to dribble through a double team. Childress knocked it out of bounds. And the pass just wasn't there on time for Thomas, but he actually did a great job sprinting the floor and getting position. Just the pass doesn't get to him in a timely fashion to where he can have an easy bucket. Fortunately for Clemson, they're able to maintain possession. But I like the effort that Thomas is giving here in the first half. But, and for his effort, he's gotten a well-deserved blow because he was a little, a little gas coming out in that possession. Wide trap coming off the best game of his career. Spinning. And the rebound by Brown. Right. Blocked by White at the rim. Fourth block by Clemson. And Elijah Thomas has done damage in the block shot department as well, but none as emphatic as this one by White. And Wright pretty much served that up on a platter for White. There were a lot of positives for Clemson in the win against Pitt on Tuesday and a couple of big ones. The play of White and Clyde Trapp. Clemson really has not had great bench production this season. But also to see Shelton Mitchell shooting the basketball well. Brad Brownell talked to us about that earlier. He feels as though Shelton would have one of those breakout games and Pittsburgh maybe the one to get him going. Shondi Brown picks up his first foul. Wake Forest just four for 20 from the field. You can stream college basketball all season long on ESPN+. Plus. Start your free trial today by downloading the app. You also get top-ranked boxing, UFC fight night, old Tyson fights now, and the latest 30 for 30, Dion's double play. Want to play for the Falcons and then in the World Series for the Braves all in the span of... What, 24 hours? Big time Deion Sanders fan. I remember that. I remember watching it and being amazed at what he was able to do during that time. And, you know, interesting just hearing about the 30 for 30. I haven't seen it yet, but that everyone wouldn't be on board with that. But I do remember the quote from Deion Basie where he said, I wasn't even playing for the Braves. I was sitting in the dugout being the pitch runner. David White on the inside. And a beautiful find over the top from Shelton Mitchell, whose assist numbers have been down this season from where he's been before, only averaging a little over three assists per game. But I believe that that's a number that's going to change for him. He's actually battled a little bit of knee soreness over the year and the rest this week with the Tuesday-Sunday turnaround. So that amount of time actually gave Clemson a little bit of time to get rest. And you're seeing... You know, a, a little bounce, a little more bounce to the step of the Clemson Tigers, especially here in this first half. Meanwhile, Wake needed that bounce from Shondi Brown. He's got six of the Demon Deacons, 12. Reed against Childress. Scara battling for the rebound, rather Javen White. And it's out of bounds to Wake. White catching inside. Great feed over the top from Shelton Mitchell and really looking off defenders. And an easy bucket once again in the paint for the Tigers. Clemson's defense has been in lockdown mode this afternoon. 
Shot clock again, under 10, another contested shot. Smart the offensive rebound, and Wake for the first time today will go to the free throw line. The foul is on Clemson. You know, I often have to mention as well, Wake Forest playing without Torrey Johnson, their other graduate transfer who's dealing with a knee issue right now. So the, I'm sorry, shoulder issue for Johnson. And, you know, their rotation is off, and you're also taking away another one of the veteran players that you have in your lineup. And when you have such an inexperienced team, and you really have just polar opposites in this game, where Wake, with very little experience, Clemson, one of the top ten teams in the nation as far as returning points scored on their roster. So you have a Clemson team that has a number of guys that have participated a lot in Division One basketball. And right now, you know, we talked about the tough schedule and what they played early in this game, but trying to put it together and looking to get to three and five in the ACC and see if they can get find a way to get back to 500. Final two minutes of this first half, and Smart fouls Reed. Second foul on Ikenna Smart. I want Smart hit those free throws a moment ago. First free throw attempts of the half for Wake, and as we said earlier, now this is a Wake Forest team that relies on getting to the line. That's a big part of their offense. Almost 18 points per game at the stripe, only two so far. And what has happened in the ACC play is teams have learned not to bail out Wake Forest on the offensive end of the floor and don't put them on the line, make them have to score over top of defense, just like Marquise Reed does on that possession. And that's really been the struggle for Wake Forest. Reed using the height advantage on Childress. Football score. Although when they played in football, it was not <laughs> this close. Not this I year. I don't think it's been this close for anybody with Clemson this past season. Not even the national championship versus Alabama was probably their most impressive performance in Clemson history. Another turnover. That's eight. Reed, baseline. Mitchell for three. Elijah Thomas nearly picked up his second foul. Brown got Thomas in the air, and Brown has been the offense for Wake, 10 of the Deeks, 18. Well, a nice play by Jalen Hoard there also, being able to come up with the defensive rebound and pushing it full court. We talked about he's not just a post player, but has perimeter skill in showing off a little bit of his passing opportunities to Shondi Brown, who's able to finish underneath, forcing the timeout. Twenty-eight, sixteen, Clemson. One hundred nine to go in the opening half. One hundred four to go in the opening half. Only two Wake Forest players have made a field goal. That's Jalen Horde and Shondi Brown, who has ten. Tigers 46% from the field. Wake just 6 of 24. And Wake Forest in danger of having their lowest first half point total of the season. Had 23 versus Virginia back on January 22nd. And right now it's 16. And, de and definitely in jeopardy of eclipsing that mark here today. Sunday Okeke picks up the foul, the sophomore from Nigeria. And Elijah Thomas to the free throw line. He's got nine points to go along with five rebounds in this first half. And when he stays on the floor, Clemson is just a, a, a different team. They really are. And, and, and that's where you look at Elijah Thomas and you have to make sure that he knows how important he is to this team. And he needs to be able to see the difference in the – I'm sure they have the, all the analytics people showing him the plus-minus when he's on and when he's off. And it keeps him from hopefully getting in those getting those silly fouls like he did when he tried to bring the ball full court and compare, not put himself in those situations. And he's actually asking for a sub right now on this last possession of the first half. The crossover is back for a sixth year, Tuesday and Wednesday on ESPN. Uh, we're pairing a college analyst this year with an NBA analyst for twice 
the basketball breakdowns. All four games are live on the ESPN app, so you can watch anywhere. Dickie V and Hubie Brown have BC Duke. Jeff Van Gundy and Chauncey Billups will do Kansas and K-State. Jay Billis, Doris Burke on the call for the Wizards and Bucks. And Mark Jackson will team up with Rebecca Lobo for Spurs Warriors. If you could only pick one of those, which one are you watching? Ooh. You, know, you got Giannis, right, with Wizards Bucks. Oh, I'm not even thinking about who's playing. I'm talking about the commentators. I'm going Billups and Van Gundy. That is going to be straight comedy. <laughs> those two guys on the sideline. That's enough for me to tune in and watch that. I could care less who's actually playing basketball. <laughs> you want to listen to the monologues. <laughs> right. Over to Sar. Horde with a nice move on the inside. Very little has come easy for Wake in this first half. And that was a great job by Jalen Horde, really being able to adjust his body in midair and get that off the glass before White was able to come over and help. Less than a second differential between game clock and shot clock. Here comes Reed. Nearly turned it over. Does turn it over. Sharon Wright Jr. at the horn. And Clemson goes into the locker room with a lead of a dozen. Marquise Reed had seven. Elijah Thomas got it going early. Nine points, five rebounds. The Tigers... Looking to build on that Tuesday win against Pitt. Once again, your score at the half, Clemson 30, Wake Forest 16. In the 162nd meeting all time between these two. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Game. Seriously good scent. Clemson looking to string together back-to-back -to -back wins after that heartbreaking loss last weekend against NC State. There was a question as to how this team would respond. They responded with 51 first-half points against Pittsburgh on Tuesday. They won that game going away. They came out strong in the first half against Wake. And uh, believe it or not, Brad Brunel had experience with that. The same situation happened with Gabe DeVoe a year ago, missing a free throw at NC State, which could have helped them win the game and turn around. And that really helped their season get back going. So he knew how to get it going. And Marquise Reed, who missed the free throws, the big free throws at NC State, responded very well for his team. And it's a veteran Clemson team. They've dealt with adversity this group last year. Remember, their best player, Dante Grantham, goes down with a season-ending injury. They took a little bit of a hit in the short term, but then recovered and were able to make a Sweet 16 run. And again, I know that Brad Brownell is preaching that to his team right now, that even though they're 2-5 and five in the league and they were 1-5 and five earlier in the week, just play each game and recognize the importance of each and every game and see if they can find a way to get back into the middle of the pack of the ACC because normally if you're middle of the pack of the ACC, you're getting an invitation to the NCAA tournament. Yeah, the issue for Clemson, they just don't have that marquee win on their ledger right now. And non-conference stumbles against Nebraska, Creighton, Mississippi State. What's going to help Clemson if they can get on a run? Their big three games that are left, UNC, Syracuse, and Virginia Tech, all in this building. And that, of course, helps when you have an opportunity to play at home. And Brandon Childress right now, zero points. The leading scorer for Wake Forest, averaging 16 points per game. But he struggled shooting the basketball in his last two games and has had a tough first half here in this one. Wake Forest has to find a way to be able to get him going as well as trying to establish Horde. There is Horde against Amir Sims. Horde got gobbled up by a double team. Mitchell behind the back. And it turns it over. Well, what we've seen for both teams thus far is turnovers to start the second half. Horde, instead of trying to get the shot off over top of Thomas, who does a great job helping, ends up with the turnover. And then but Clemson has given the basketball back to Wake Forest on both Wake Forest turnovers. And we'll see we get the fifth turnover here of the second half. Meanwhile, Horde again tried to go through multiple defenders. Wake has not won a road game this season. 
One and seven in the ACC, the lone win against NC State. Sims three, not there. And here comes Wright. Mitchell picks it up. Blocked at the rim, but the putback is there by Sims. And another great defensive job by Elijah Thomas in getting in help position, coming over, blocking a shot, and saving the basketball, leading to the breakout opportunity for Clemson. Shondi Brown, it seems every Wake player in this half is trying to score through a double team. Well, it seems that each and every one of them also is getting their shot blocked by Elijah Thomas because every time someone penetrates, Thomas is coming over to help out. A great job there to be able to save that basketball and get it back into Shelton Mitchell. Four blocks for Thomas, who's sixth all-time in that category at Clemson. Wright still can't get it to fall. The backcourt of Wright and Childress a combined 0 for 9. Thomas skips one. Good ball movement by Clemson. Thomas was wide open. Now Reed finds him. Elijah Thomas with a grin that says, what took you so long? <laughs> well, Elijah Thomas is having a breakout performance here tonight. And, of course, he's a guy that's been able to put up big numbers at Clemson but has struggled a bit over this season. And now you see him playing special basketball. And he's a guy that actually was injured early in the year, didn't have opportunities to practice, and missed a lot of practice time. But now rounding his way into shape and continues to block shots. He's got five blocks. Meanwhile, Childress still can't buy a bucket. Childress the steal. Will this get him going? He gives it up to Brown, who makes his way around to Thomas for the two. A dozen for Shondi Brown. He's got more than half of Wake's total. Thomas down low, too easy. And that's just great execution from Clemson and recognizing where the next man is, the open man. Shelton Mitchell on the pick and roll, finding Sims. And, of course, with Amir Sims' ability to knock down the three, you rotate to him and leave Elijah Thomas open wide underneath the basket. And a turnover by Wake Forest. That sums up. The afternoon for the Deeks. So a ball movement is critical for Clemson. And you see Thomas with the cross-court pass, and the ball ends up changing sides of the floor. And then again, no one recognizing where the biggest guy on the floor for Clemson is under the basket. And another easy bucket, but it started with great play and ball movement by Reed and Thomas. Six blocks for Elijah Thomas tonight. Sims wide open. Offensive rebound, Scarrow came out of nowhere to grab the loose ball. And for Wake Forest right now, even when you're able to get Clemson to miss, you don't finish the defensive possession with the rebound. Scarrow strong to the 10. And of course, you end up giving up second chance points when you're forced to play defense for such a long time, giving up offensive rebounds in multiple possessions. Right. Back iron. Offensive rebound by Musius. This one doesn't go either. And Wake Forest struggles from three continue. They're just 25% in ACC play. 30% on the year and two for 13 today. Reed down the lane, splits the D. Largest lead of the afternoon for Clemson. And Marquise Reed not really having to have a spectacular performance. We mentioned earlier he averages over 21 points per game against Wake Forest throughout his career. But with the emergence of his teammates and their offensive production in this game, he hasn't had to have a huge game. Turnover number 13.
10-2 run to open the second half by Clemson. And Wake Forest hasn't helped themselves with all the turnovers. Continuing to give Clemson multiple opportunities on the offensive end of the floor. Spin cycle, Thomas. 17 points, 8 rebounds, 6 blocks for the big fella. Right. That's block number seven. That's another block shot by Elijah Thomas, and he needs a break right now. Everyone looking for the media timeout, but if you're Clemson, you don't want to stop this role, especially the way things are going. Danny Manning has to get the timeout. Shelton Mitchell gets the members bounce. Clemson on a 15-2 blitz to open the second half. And everything going right for the Tigers. The beautiful feed from Reed to Elijah Thomas, who finishes off. All smiles in Tigerland, we remind you. Big Monday is tomorrow after this Super Sunday. At 7 Eastern, Louisville will take on Virginia Tech, a pair of 7-2 and two teams in the ACC, both in the top 15. Then... Number 16, Texas Tech welcomes West Virginia to Lubbock. Brandon Childress, the junior, still looking for that first field goal. Gets an open look. And it's still not there. Follows his shot, drops it off for win. The freshman from Albany. And I like that play by Childress. It's a small thing, but... He knows that he hasn't made a shot, but even off the offensive rebound, he doesn't look to force one and makes the right play, gives it up to Michael Wynn for the wide-open layup. And that's tough to do, especially when you know that you're struggling and you need to see the basketball go through to continue to make the right play and not force the action. Michael Wynn has been seeing the floor a lot more of late. Javen White left it way short, might have been blocked. Musius over to Shondi Brown. That's a three, no good. Rebound White. White's a transfer from Oral Roberts, where he was second in the Summit League in rebounding last year. Reed can't connect. Entry pass to Smart. Hook shot, not there. How many open looks has Wake had today? Very few. No, they haven't. And, and uh, Clemson's done a great job defensively, really taking away the strengths of Wake Forest, and which is, of course, Brandon Childress on the offensive end, but also really keeping Horde in check, and you can't guard everyone. Shondi Brown has been able to find a number of looks, but for the most part, they've definitely made it a difficult task when they've gotten the ball to the defensive end of the floor. Sims fouled on the drive. Clemson in control. They've got more than twice as many points as Wake. The book of Eli. Elijah Thomas has been a defensive cleanser this afternoon. And Elijah Thomas has done a great job coming over, helping out his teammates to the tune of seven block shots in this game thus far. And he doesn't seem to be slowing down at all. And Clemson started the game out doing a great job defensively. And right now you see Thomas threatening that most blocks by a Clemson player in the game. Tree Rollins and, of course, Sharon Wright Sr. Junior plays for Wake Forest. Not on the floor right now. It's been all Clemson all afternoon. And the Tigers coming out of the locker room. On a 15-4 run. That ball was tipped. Five to shoot. Reed against Childress. Reed. And they get a foul. And we get a media timeout. Clemson up 23. Also over Tuesday and Wednesday on ESPN with Corey Alexander and his Schroff. Elijah Thomas has had a big hand in Clemson's success today. Tigers looking to make it back-to-back -back wins 
They try to get back toward 500 in league play. Two and five entering this game. But that lob is an errant pass intended for Clyde Trapp. You know, Nishan, I was in Winston-Salem on Wednesday night when Louisville handled the Demon Deacons. And one thing in that game, you could tell that, you know, Wake Forest was a deflated team. I'm not going to say that they gave up, but they definitely didn't play with the same level of effort that they're playing with today. So that's one positive sign for Wake Forest. Even though they're struggling to score, they have not stopped playing with the effort necessary, you know, to please their coach. And again, that's really all you can ask for. You can, I mean, guys making shots, oftentimes it just doesn't happen. I mean, Wake now has 24 points with 11 minutes remaining. We have to remember, NC State, a top 25 team, only scored 25 points in 40 minutes yesterday. So you can't always, you know, have your team making shots. But the effort, that's all you could ask for. Danny Manning has gotten it from his young team. They've just been able to get it done defensively. And they haven't been able to stop Elijah Thomas, number 14, 19 points now for Thomas. Win over Scaro. Offensive rebound, Musius. And he'll shoot two. And that's an element of the game. We said it in the first half. Clemson is taken away. Wake usually gets a lot of its points at the free throw line. Not the case this afternoon. ACC headlines, North Carolina avenged a home loss to Louisville by thumping the cards on the road, 79 to 69. UNC undefeated in road games in the ACC. Uh, that Virginia Tech NC State debacle, that final score was a final score, 47 to 24. And Notre Dame going to Boston College and getting a win. And get this, since they have been in the ACC, Boston College has never beaten Notre Dame. Wow. I believe the streak is now 13 games where Notre Dame has won every one versus Boston College. BC is a team that has played better since they've been getting healthy. Clyde Trapp able to break the press. Scara for three. And the rebound comes to Horde. Olivier Sar, seven footer from Toulouse, France. And we get a whistle as Sharon Wright was hit. It's an injury whistle. You got a feel for Danny Manning in some ways since coming to Wake. He did energize that program. He's recruited well. You look at guys like Horde and Shondi Brown, two top 40 recruits, two of the biggest recruits in about a decade. But when guys leave early that you don't expect to leave early, it's different than if you're Mike Krzyzewski at Duke where, okay, we're recruiting a batch of freshmen knowing that they're all going to be gone next year and you can recruit under them. You know, Wake Forest, they didn't expect John Collins to leave after two years. They didn't think Dino Smidoglu was going to, to go play professionally in Greece after three years. Uh, Doral Moore certainly was a surprise leaving school, as was Brian Crawford last year. Well, for two straight years, you had that happen. Now, John Collins, of course, played his way into being a NBA draft pick. And he's a good it's, NBA player And now. he's a very good NBA player. So that one you pretty much can expect. But outside of that, when you talk about Middaglou and then you look at Brian Crawford and Doral Moore, those are not losses that you expect. And if you add those guys to what you have at Wake Forest right now, and then Keyshawn Wood stays instead of going transferring to Ohio State, you're looking at a potential NCAA tournament team, and the whole narrative around this Wake Forest program is completely different. I can remember doing the Jordan Brand Classic back in April last year and saying with Jalen Hoare coming to the mix with what Wake Forest has returning, they should return to the NCAA tournament. And then, of course, Crawford and Doral Moore – you know, even with the information that they're not going to be drafted, decide to stay in and not come back to school. And again, there's nothing as a coach you can do about that if a young man just no longer wants to be in college and play college basketball. Yeah, Danny Manning said that. He goes, that's the path that those guys chose. A traveling violation. Thank you for the Tigers, number four. 
You know, at least what gets me is, of course, you know, you hear all the talk around college basketball and the ACC, but to, to the average fan honestly thinks that a coach has enough influence over a, a young man to say, no, you have to stay in school. When there's so many other influences on the outside, whether it's handlers, it's, you know, AAU coaches, it's parents, it's whomever it may be, that are basically saying, hey, look, you can go. And with the two-way contracts and the G League and all the opportunities to play professional basketball now, a lot of kids just flat out don't want to go to school. And Wake Forest is not an easy school to be in. So is there another option then for those types of students? And I'm talking, you know, one and dones. Listen, we saw Darius Baisley. Instead of going to Syracuse, he decided to go to the G League and then decided he wasn't going to play in the G League either and ends up taking the year off to work out. That was one case, but players going to the G League, players going overseas. Th does the system have to be changed The there? system definitely has to be changed, and it has to be a way to allow young players that do not want to go to college to be able to go pursue a professional basketball career. Now, that doesn't mean that they'll all be NBA players for Jalen Horde who will be an NBA player, is able to finish up the miss from Brandon Childress. But there has to be something that allows these young men to make that decision without putting these coaches and their jobs in jeopardy by putting them in position. Because, again, there's not just the winning and losing on the court. There's the APR. Right. There's the academic standards that you have to uphold as a, as a basketball program that when guys leave your program, they take, a, they take a big hit. Newman picks up the foul. Clemson in full control. And that look sums it up for Danny Manning. It is Super Bowl Sunday and notable Clemson players that have played in the big game. Dwight Clark, the late great Dwight Clark with the 49ers. Had that great catch in the NFC Championship. Tenth round pick of the Niners in 1979. Two-time Super Bowl champion. Who can forget the fridge? William Perry, the refrigerator. Clemson D lineman. Scored one of the most memorable touchdowns in Super Bowl history. And the Bears win against the Patriots in Super Bowl 20. Brady and Gronk on the right, taking some time off, and they'll <laughs> take the jet over to the big game later. I'm not sure if Gronk gets enough credit for how great of a football player he is. And I understand that he's catching passes from the person who you feel is the best quarterback of all time. It's not just me, Corey. Okay, you and you and one other person. So now, but Apparently, the, <laughs> apparently that, that jersey is not popular in these parts. Actually, you know what's crazy? The best-selling jersey of the year was Tom Brady. And Brady, what, 41 years old? That, that's amazing stuff. And, again, I all respect to Tom Brady for his greatness and what he's been able to accomplish. But you don't think he's the greatest quarterback of all time? I do not. He has the numbers. He has the Super Bowls. He has the longevity. He has, what else he do ha you want? He ha what numbers does he have? What numbers are you saying? Because his numbers are not better than Peyton Manning's. His numbers are not better than Drew Brees. I mean, he's right up there. Okay, I mean, Joe, okay, Joe okay, Montana's okay. numbers, you but, feel Montana's the greatest. Montana's numbers aren't up there with Manning but and I Brees also, and I also think that Montana played in an era where the quarterback was not protected the way that they are now. But when you play for the greatest football coach who puts his players in position to be. You know, again, it's not to take away from Brady's greatness because he is one of the best quarterbacks of all time. But Bill Belichick is the best coach of all time. And again, so when you look at that and the way that he's put him, Tom Brady did not get touched in the AFC Championship. Well, he did, and they called. Oh, there you go. They penalty. threw a flag. I'm right. sorry. When they did blow on him that one time, they called, They threw a flag. Well, listen, that's the evolution. <laughs> that's the evolution of the game. And, and I get that. And I do get that. And so, therefore, but in my opinion, I think that there have been two guys who have done it better, one Joe Montana and then Peyton Manning. But I won't take away from Brady's greatness. But I think you have to look at the fact that Gronk is great, too. But more importantly, Bill Belichick is the great. Can you sit here and tell me that Tom Brady in his career has had better supporting casts than Peyton Manning and Joe Montana? Yes, I can. Oh, come on. Let me tell you where it is, on the defensive end of the ball. Because again, about the offense, though, here. But, uh, you're talking You've about got Jerry Rice. Do you, you know, what the, score, do you know what the Craig. score was for the first Super Bowl that Tom Brady won? 
Oh, again, that was no, a three-point no, no, game. Again. It was a three-point game. Okay. Right. And who won that game? The defense. And it's the kicker. About, he always has a great defense, which allows it. Peyton Manning had a game one against Baltimore, and a, and a safety makes a wrong play, allowing Joe Flacco to complete a touchdown pass. Peyton Manning has nothing to do with that, so therefore he doesn't go to the Super Bowl. He had Bob Sanders and Dwight <laughs> Freeney on that side of the ball for a number of years. Okay, but it doesn't make a great defense. Again, in football, there are so many more people that you're play really, a part in the game. You're really trying here. Oh, no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying because I'm already convinced of this. <laughs> so, therefore, I understand how this works. All right, back to basketball. There's a three by Newman. And John Newman starting to get more and more minutes for Clemson and adding to the program. Brad Brunel loves what he does defensively. Tom Brady-like accuracy. <laughs> Win. Speaking of getting more minutes, Michael Wynn, after a career-high 11 points at Miami, has found himself in the rotation. He's actually played in every ACC game for Danny Manning this year. And again, this the young talent for Wake Forest is going to be good. I think that the, they have, when you look at Musius, you think about Jalen Horde, and you look at when they have players that are going to be good ACC players. But when they're playing against seniors and grad seniors like Elijah Thomas, like Shelton Mitchell, Marquise Reed, they're not going to stand out. But I think that there is enough young talent in this Wake Forest program that helps them in the future. But you just have to have patience and give these guys time, especially when they don't have the Bryant Crawfords and Doral Moores alongside helping them out. Shelton Mitchell, the basket plus one. In some ways, the uneven trajectory, it's like what Paul Hewitt faced at Georgia Tech where there was an influx of talent coming. They just couldn't stay long enough where you could build something for that season that resembled a, a competitive squad. No, I agree with you, Harley. And another thing that very similar to what Paul Hewitt dealt with at Georgia Tech that you have a way for us, the academic standards are not just the minimum requirements of the NCAA. You have a higher level of academic standard at Wake Forest that makes it difficult for as far as who Danny Manning can recruit. I have been with Danny Manning in situations where he's been recruiting players and told me, Corey, simply, I can't get this guy into school. And so that, that is, you know, an area where, and I'm not going to call it a handicap, but it's just, you know, the requirements of the university, and you have to fit players that fit into your system but also have the academic background to be able to survive at what is a great university. Aaron Spivey into the game. And there is Musius, one of the freshmen, New Hampshire Player of the Year, according to USA Today. And Isaiah Musius out of the PSA Cardinal program, a New York kid who is going to be a good college basketball player. A double dribble call against Clemson, 58-32 to with Elijah Thomas leading the way for the Tigers. Clemson three minutes and 44 seconds away from improving to three and five in ACC play. And the way the back end of their conference schedule sets up, this is a team that really has a chance to make some noise in the league going forward. You're absolutely right. They have to go to Georgia Tech, which has been a tough place to win. Josh Pastner has been known to knock off teams in, in their building. And then Virginia Tech coming to your place for if you're Clemson, most likely no Justin Robinson. You go to Miami, who struggled this year, and then having to go to Louisville, which is a tough place to play, playing at home against Florida State, who, as you mentioned you know, earlier, they had a big lead against Florida State at Florida State last week and ended up surrendering that game. But now playing with a little more confidence and getting healthy helps Clemson. And I know Brad Brownell likes his chances moving forward into the schedule. Three of their biggest games the rest of the way, all here at Little John. That's North Carolina, Syracuse, and Virginia Tech. And a foul on Musius. Or rather, Marquise Reed. Third foul on Reed. 3.34 to go in regulation. Clemson up 58-33. Wake Forest has a game against Pitt Tuesday. That's on ESPNU. Brown leaning into one. He's been quiet in the second half. A 
Amir Sims. Tipped up by Trey Jamison. And that ball was actually in the cylinder. <laughs> Jamison got away with one, and it comes up with the offensive rebound because of it. So I got a trivia question for you. So Jamison, number one player coming out of Alabama in basketball. He signs with Clemson. Clemson also got the number one player coming out of Alabama in football. Who showed out in the national championship game, by the way. <laughs> and he reminded Alabama of that. That was Justin Ross, their freshman wide receiver. Sims picks up the foul. I remember I was at a Clemson football practice early in the season. And Don Munson, the play-by-play -play man for Clemson, who does a terrific job, was telling me that the way the people around the program were talking about Justin Ross, they felt he could be the best wide receiver of the Dabo Sweeney era. At least, I'm distracted. Aaron Spivey getting an opportunity to play, and I believe he has his shorts on backwards. And when you look at it, and this is, I have been perplexed by this over the last couple minutes watching. <laughs> And I look, so I'm looking at I, I everyone else. No, they are backwards. Yeah, I'm looking They're at everyone absolutely else's backwards. shorts. And Spivey has his shorts on backwards. Does that not sum up the afternoon for Wake? <laughs> Clyde Trapp. Right, what I was saying about Justin Ross, they feel he could be the best receiver of the Dabo Sweeney era, and that era has produced DeAndre Hopkins, Sammy Watkins, Martavis Bryant, Mike Williams. I'm still distracted by Spivey. Spivey's got his shorts on backwards. <laughs> but he knows now. He knows now. I think he absolutely knows now. <laughs> I bet you he doesn't know that he's on TV and we're talking about the fact that he has his shorts on backwards. Now, is this a not top ten moment? <laughs> this is definitely a not top ten moment. Not as bad as putting your jersey on backwards or not having a jersey on, but still, it's up there. Spivey, senior from Rocky Mount, North Carolina. And you mentioned those Clemson receivers. I can tell you right now. And, and he may be better in college, but if he's better than Hopkins in the NFL and Watkins, then he's really special. And Ross showed out in the national championship game. Definitely has a chance to be that guy we're talking about. But, um, yeah, that, that's going to be interesting to see if he can be anywhere near as good as Hopkins. Now you got me thinking about Spivey. <laughs> so if he knocks down a couple of shots here, do you ever go back to wearing your shorts the right way? Oh, no. No, no. He gets a couple buckets. He's got to wear them backwards every game from here on out. It'll stay with Clemson. <laughs> Lyles Davis comes into the game, the walk-on. Hunter Tyson in as well. That's like the Red Auerbach victory cigar, right, when the walk-on <laughs> comes into the game? <laughs> I'll tell you, you've got a couple walk-ons in the ACC right now that are getting it done. Oh, that goes in for Davis. <laughs> That's the loudest this place has been all afternoon. And Clemson's up by 29. And Davis, the lefty firing. He's got Paul range. He's nowhere near the three-point line. Shoots it from one of the front toes of the Paul. And then, of course, has the arrow locked and loaded to shoot into the sky once the three goes in. Anthony Billis checks in for Wake. And there's Davis coming up with the steal. And it belongs to Clemson. Spivey picks up the foul. Forty in black is Anthony Billis, the son of our colleague Jay Billis.
wrap is bumped. A lot of whistles here late in the game with the outcome decided. OKK's third. Sports Center tonight after the Super Bowl live reactions to the result of Super Bowl 53 exclusive interviews with the champions. And then does the outcome of tonight's game shape the Brady Belichick legacy? I, I think those legacies are pretty secure. I, I will actually agree with you on that, which I never like to agree with you on anything, but I do believe that their legacies are secure. But getting to six Super Bowls for Brady and Belichick would also surpass the Dallas Cowboys, which is the reason why I don't watch football anymore. Jameis in the block. It's been a long time since the Cowboys yeah, have been made even, real even noise. Even longer since your Jets have, so let's keep that conversation <laughs> wow. to a minimum. <laughs> I can't believe you're, you are such a Brady fan when you're not, supposed I, to be a I, Jets, Jets fan. Listen, I never said I'm a Patriots fan. I, I never didn't say said Patriots. I said Brady. When he's haunted and tormented your team <laughs> over the years as much as he has mine, th there are scars, and you begrudgingly appreciate the greatness. And you kind of wish you had him on your team. <laughs> no, that part. Have I you, have you not, seen some of the quarterbacks the Jets deny. have trotted out over the years? <laughs> I went to games when Browning Nagel played quarterback there. Okay. The fact that you continue to admit to being a Jets fan, I can appreciate that. Got another whistle here with 14 seconds to go. Foul is on Okeke. Sunday Okeke, sophomore out of Lagos, Nigeria. And Jamison to the line, the freshman from Birmingham, Alabama. And Jamison, of course, going to need to step up and fulfill the shoes of one Elijah Thomas next year. So good minutes for him to kind of get his feet wet in the ACC play. But Clemson's looked impressive, Corey, the last couple of games. And I know Pitt and Awake aren't near the top of the ACC right now, but what can that do for a team's confidence? Well, it does a lot for that confidence, especially when you have to start off a schedule as brutally as Clemson did and seems to you know, pretty much do that every year. And again, Brad Brownell, if he can keep the morale of his team up and allow them to go get a couple wins and string a couple wins together, you know, this is a Clemson team that can definitely make some noise in the ACC. They have a great backcourt. They've got a strong interior presence in Elijah Thomas. They need Scara and Amir Sims to give them offense on a, on, on a nightly basis. And also, they've got to understand that they have to play Brad Brownell level defense in order to be able to compete in this league. But I think Clemson has the pieces in order to get back into the middle of the pack in the ACC, which, again, you finish in the middle of the pack of this conference, you're now in that conversation as to getting an at-large bid if you don't win the ACC tournament. Yeah, play yourself to the bubble. Rams or Pats, who do you got tonight? I'm going with the Rams just because I cannot see the Patriots get one more ring than the Cowboys. We agree on that front. We agree on this. Clemson was pretty impressive this afternoon, 47% from the field. Defensively, they held Wake below 20 points in the first and second half. And Elijah Thomas, 23 points, 10 rebounds, and he blocked everything in his radius. And Elijah Thomas, of course, a huge performance for him showing up. Marquise Reed didn't have to do as much for the Tigers. Got the rest of it in this game. But they're going to need his production as well as Shelton Mitchell and the rest of the Tigers as the season goes along. But they need for Thomas to continue to play at the level that he did tonight, this afternoon. Clemson now 3-5 and five in league play. Wake falls to 1-8 and eight in the ACC. When the former walk-on gets it going from the outside, you know it's your afternoon. We'll talk to Elijah Thomas, today's hero, when we come back. Elijah Thomas today, 23 points, 10 rebounds, and a career-high seven block shots. Clemson making easy work of Wake Forest. The Tigers have now won two in a row, three and five in the ACC. And Elijah Thomas uh, joining us after the game. When did you know this was going to be your day? I didn't. Um, 
Uh, we were just trying to get better today. Uh, we knew it was a good team. They've beaten good teams this year in our conference, and we just wanted to come out and protect our home turf. And, uh, you know, Coach B, Coach Dean, all our coaches, they grew up a great game plan for us, and we executed it. So it went well. So now, of course, you did almost everything great today. Yeah. But you had one play oh, that man. had you <laughs> patting your chest, letting Coach Brownell know that it was your fault uh, <laughs> when you got the rebound and went 94 feet and picked up the offensive foul. What were you, what were you thinking? What was your plan for that play? Well, like he knows, like in practice, like if I get a rebound and nobody comes to get the ball, I'm gonna do it. Like, I'm gonna take it. But the thing was, is I saw the guy moving. So when I saw him move, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna get a foul. So I was in my little James Harden mode. It didn't go well. <laughs> so when I looked at him, I thought he was going to take me out. But he kept me in, so all credit to him. He, he did. Kept me in. Absolutely. <laughs> and, of course, you were able to come up with a career-high seven block shots tonight, helping out your teammates defensively. How much of this this team has to identify itself with this defensive end of the floor? Man, I, I can't even describe the amount of work we put in and the work we, we have to put in constantly to get back to, like I was telling him, that level we were last year and then exceed that level. You know, that's our identity. We come out and we play hard. You know, teams, they'll be on their toes. And if we can get teams on our toes, we can create our offense. And that's what we want to do. We want to play defense, put teams on their toes, and then create our offense. Elijah, last weekend you guys had that heartbreaking loss to NC State. And people wonder, you know, how does the team bounce back? This is a veteran group. What do you think has allowed you guys to bounce back with two convincing victories the way you have? Great coaches. Great coaches. Uh, great great locker room. You know, we, we told each other in the locker room at NC State when we lost that game, okay, let's move on to the next one. Because, you know, we can't continue to dwell on that game. You know, it was a great shot by Beverly. He's a great player. Marquise is, if I'm not mistaken, one of the best free throw shooters in the ACC, maybe in the country. So, you know, that just happens. Like, nobody's perfect. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if he can get that back, he'll make all those free throws. After that game, he came back, and he was actually in here shooting free throws. So, you know, we pride ourselves on our Clemson grid, and we just wanted to get past and focus on today. And for yourself, for Shelton, and for Marquise, all three of you guys decided to come back for a fifth year. You were the first one to say that I'm still in. I'm not going anywhere. What was it about this place that made you decide that? Oh, I love it here. Um, I tell everybody back home, this is paradise for me. I, I literally, there's nothing that I don't like about this school. I'm a big football guy. Being able to watch them guys win and win championships, I've experienced two natties here. Nobody can say they've experienced two natties besides people at Alabama. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that's just something real cool to see. Um, I'm friends with those guys. And then my teammates here, they're great teammates. You know, we're really connected off and on, on and off the court. You know, we like to play video games with each other. And Coach B, he coaches us hard, but at the same time, he lets us be ourselves. Like, and, he, and he loves our personalities. You don't really get to see that in many programs. So, you know, to have great coaches like that along with all our other assistants, you know, this is like a dream. Eli, what is the plan now for Super Bowl Sunday? Oh, go home, shower, and uh, take care of my dog. Me and my dog go watch the Super Bowl together. Oh, so no, no big party? No, no, no. We don't do that here. You got to watch the game. <laughs> All yeah. right, so now who you got? Ooh. Um, I'm going to have to say um, Tom Brady and the Patriots. I want the Rams to win because I'm a big fan <laughs> of Todd Gurley. Like, I, I call him the James Harden of football. Uh, so I would like to see him win. You know, they deserve it. And uh, Reynolds, a receiver, he's a, a and uh grad. I was friends with him when I was at NM my freshman year. So it would be cool to watch him win a um, championship. But I got to go for the Patriots. What about y'all? Rams. Rams. I want the Rams to win. <laughs> right. Yeah. Now, I'm with you. The Patriots <laughs> might win, but yeah. we appreciate you, big fella. Thank you for coming and hanging out Thank with us today. All right. Appreciate Elijah that. Thomas, appreciate it. A little Patriot fatigue here, but Elijah's got Tom Brady. That's okay. Upcoming schedule for Clemson, a road trip to Atlanta on Wednesday, and then back home next weekend for Virginia Tech. Second half of the schedule really sets up for the Tigers to make another late-season push, get themselves back on the bubble, and in the NCAA tournament conversation. Final score from Little John Coliseum. It was all Clemson offense, defense. Elijah Thomas with a double-double and seven blocks. The Tigers 64, Wake Forest 37. Clemson now 3-5 and five in the ACC. The Demon Deacons still stuck on one league win. Coming up next here on ESPNU, women's college basketball, Florida and number 15, Kentucky. For Corey Alexander, I'm Anish Shroff. Thanks for watching. Good afternoon from Clemson.